my shirt is being held together by a hair clip right now, which is also about how stable my life feels. Just don't look at it. <laughs> Hi everybody, my name is Kim. Welcome to today's video. Um, I'll save the life update for the end if anybody cares, but I moved. I'm here. I'm good. Everything's fine. Let's talk about my hairy face. I realized recently that it's been a full year since I recorded what is now my most viewed video, which is where I grew out my facial hair for two weeks. If you don't know, I have PCOS, which is polycystic ovarian syndrome. As part of that, I grow, I guess what you would call excessive facial hair. What does excessive even mean though? I feel like I could be growing more. But about a year ago, I was quarantining because of the pandemic. I realized that I was gonna have a few weeks where I wouldn't see anybody. And so I decided to just let the hair grow out for a couple weeks and I documented the process. You're welcome to go back and watch the original video. I'll put a card up somewhere, but I thought it'd be kind of interesting to revisit the topic a year later, just talk about how my thoughts on things have changed, what has stayed the same, and also just to talk about how doing that video impacted me. <laughs> That's your most viewed video? Yes. Like ever? Yes. A video where you weren't responding to anything or making fun of anybody? Yeah, that's right. Don't you see what happens when you make original content instead of being such a little hater? Fuck off. <laughs> anyway, on to the thing that we're talking about. So the first thing that I kind of noticed when I was re-watching this video is just how uncomfortable I was to talk about this on camera. And a lot of people watching it probably noticed that too. Growing out my facial hair, that was really hard to say. And that's also why I think it was a good video looking back at it because I'm capturing my very raw feelings and I'm very glad that I have that footage to look back on. I don't know. Ah. The intro of that video was me talking about what I was going to do, why I was doing it, and uh, re-watching it made me realize that I really, I remember nothing of my videos after I make them. <laughs> I'll just let past me talk for a bit because she said a lot of it better than I could now. Whatever your thoughts might be on it or how accepting you might be of women's body hair, it's just a fact that there is a huge stigma that comes along with it. Just think about it. There is stigma with women having body hair in places where we all know that it naturally grows in just about every single woman. So you can imagine that the stigma of growing body hair in places where people think it's not supposed to grow in women is just even more on top of that. That was very well put. <laughs> Someone very smart must have made that video. The stigma surrounding women's body hair is still surprisingly a thing. And you know what? I'm pretty offended about that. Did nobody watch my video that was supposed to fix all the problems? I have noticed recently though, at least in my weird corner of the internet, that it seems like there's a bit more of a movement happening with people showing their body hair. And I've seen it both as like, you know, look, <laughs> look at my body hair. I don't know why I pointed to my armpit. Whatever, you get it. But I've also just seen it as like, I'm a person who exists. This is my body. It happens to have hair on it. And I think that both are, are good and important. I've noticed for myself though, some of the videos that are more like, look at it, can be a little bit disheartening sometimes. Like if someone does a video showing their body hair and it's way less body hair than I have, then there can be an instinct where it's kind of like, oh, well, of course she can still be beautiful. She doesn't have anywhere close to what I have, right? And that, that whole line of thinking is pointless. In the past, when I've talked about models, for example, I've talked about how I feel like it's important to have representation of a lot of different types of bodies because it kind of creates an understanding that every person deserves to feel beautiful in their body. And the more diverse the representation is, the more it kind of creates that understanding without having to see someone who looks exactly like you do, right? And the same is true with body hair it's just kind of easier to forget. Like I need to get myself out of that mindset that it's about whether it's better or worse to have less or more and just focus on the fact that this is my body, this is what we're working with here and we're in this together, so let's just move on. And because I forget everything that I say as soon as I say it, I also forgot that I put in that video pictures of how goofy I used to look. <laughs> completely fair though, I was not really doing myself any favors in that department. <laughs> Oh God, I don't want to see that. Stop, no. I used to look even dorkier than I do now. I'm proud of it. Now, watching myself go through the actual experiment itself, I didn't find quite as impactful as I thought it would, to be honest. At the time when I was editing the video, I remember finding it really difficult to look back on the footage, but now maybe because more time has passed, I was just like, yep, that's my face. That's what it looks like after a couple weeks of not touching it. So I guess that's good. <laughs> 
guess that is a positive impact. But the real impact that doing this experiment had on me came from the reception to the video more than it came from anything that you see in the video. I try to not really read comments that often um, just for my own mental health which is constantly like a, a house of playing cards. But I have read most of the comments on that video and going through and reading people's experiences, whether this is something that they've struggled with or not, and just hearing everybody's thoughts. Um, it was it was overwhelmingly happy for me. <laughs> so thank you. Something else I want to talk about is I know that for a lot of people who watched that video, the part where I'm talking to my partner at the time, um, I know that that was really meaningful and it was to me at the time too, obviously. And the video is capturing how I'm feeling at that time and so I'm glad that it's in there because it's important context to everything. But um, sort of separately from what I talked about in that video, I also think it's important to acknowledge that the expectations that you know I have as a woman who has this condition, the expectations that I have for other people are often very low. I've said it many times, I even said it in that original video, I'm not demanding that you think I'm attractive or that you think me with a beard is attractive. <laughs> it's okay if you don't, I'm fine. I will somehow <laughs> get over it. <laughs> Although whether you do or don't, and this goes for me and probably most people who deal with this, uh, you don't have to tell me. <laughs> Your opinion is actually not needed. However, I do think that sometimes we can be guilty of praising the bare minimum instead of just accepting it. Like think about it this way, if you're making like a pros and cons list about somebody, them being cool with your face should not really be on there. <laughs> like that should just be assumed to be honest. And if anyone's out there right now and this is stuff that you're, you're really worried about, obviously I understand. Um, but I also think that the people who care about you, they will be kinder to you about it than you're expecting them to be. I can almost guarantee it. I don't know, maybe not your one weird uncle, <laughs> but everyone else would be nice. Part of why I think in my life the facial hair thing really weighed on me for a long time was because I didn't really give the people in my life the opportunity to be accepting of it. The stigma that exists around it, like, it's really ingrained in a lot of people, or at least I know it's really ingrained in me. But if you give people the opportunity to kind of challenge that and push back against it, most of them will. And that's something I've been thinking about a lot recently because, you know, I, I just moved to a new place. Like I've been introducing myself to a lot of people and it just adds a, a whole other layer to things. Speaking of layers, masks. <laughs> I didn't really need more reasons to keep wearing a mask, but having something that I'm very insecure about on the lower half of my face it does make it a lot more tolerable. I really do think though in the future, people are gonna look back at right now and they're gonna be like, we judged women that harshly for their body hair, pardon? <laughs> Actually what they're gonna do is they're gonna go, our planet is on fire. <laughs> our body hair singed off about 10,000 years ago. What does that even mean? existential dread with your women's hormones video. There you go. Okay, I don't know how to transition into my next point, but um, I'm going to talk about my period now. <laughs> so I've been trying to eat a more PCOS friendly diet. Um, this is something I might make a video about in the future if I ever feel like I understand it, but right now I have no fucking idea, so don't ask me anything. But you're welcome to look up your own information on it. I have been doing it for a little while now, and uh, I'm very happy to report that I have noticed no change in my facial hair whatsoever, and now I just get my period more often. <laughs> Woo! No, but that's why I'm not going to talk about it quite yet. I feel like it's still a work in progress, but um, it touches on something that I do want to talk about, which is this feeling that a lot of you can probably relate to that my body is just working against me all the time. Everybody has something that they struggle with when it comes to their body, maybe even many things. <laughs> I can relate. But what I've kind of noticed is that the disdain that I've been feeling for my body is stronger than I thought that it was, to be honest. When I was a little kid and I was in gym class and I was running slower than all the other kids, I felt like absolute shit about myself. Specifically in that scenario where you're like running with a bunch of children, it's impossible to not compare yourself. You're literally side by side and when you're me, you're watching all of them go ahead of you <laughs> much faster. <laughs> like fuck, we really torture kids in school, eh? 
looking back, I had like two gym teachers that weren't abusive. And I look back at them as like fucking angels. <laughs> They just didn't scream at me. But once I was past that nightmare stage of my life and was becoming more of an adult, I felt like I was just fighting to get to a place where I didn't hate the way that I looked. And I got there, like no joke, I, I actually did. I would say about a year ago when I made that original video, I was kind of settling into feeling that way. And I would say now I don't have a problem with my appearance, it's okay. But then, and this is where things get a little bit tricky you guys, now I'm starting to care a little bit more about my physical health. It definitely was not the priority before <laughs> playing card house, <laughs> but uh, you know, my ducks are kind of in a row now. I'm trying to care a little bit. And I have two things to say about this. Number one, it's fucking embarrassing to say that you care. I feel like saying I'm working on my mental health is a little bit easier because you know, you guys can't see what's going on up here. <laughs> Thank fucking God. But admitting that I'm working on my physical health, I feel like that opens up the door a little bit more for people to look at me and make a judgment on how good they think I've been at doing that. And I'm not doing it with the goal of losing weight, which I think can be hard for people to understand too. Like. I'm doing it for the goal of feeling healthier and having better energy levels. And I'm going to take good care of my body however it looks throughout that process. The second thing I wanted to say that comes along with caring and with doing all this online research is that in a lot of ways, I feel like I have stepped back into the gym class of life. <laughs> it's hard to know what is beneficial and what isn't beneficial to look at. Like sometimes I'll see someone who's dealing with kind of the same thing as me, who has done amazing things. And I go, wow, that's so encouraging. If she can do it, I can do it too. And then sometimes I'll see something that's very similar and I look at it and I go, well, what the fuck's wrong with me? If she did it, why can't I? <laughs> And like I was just saying, that can make it really hard to talk to other people about it too. Because sometimes someone might say, um, oh, I know you can do it. And sometimes that's the most wonderful, uplifting thing in the entire world. And then sometimes it makes me think, uh, <laughs> don't put that pressure on me, please. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I don't even know what it is. So I don't know if I can do it. <laughs> uh, anyway, if you're out there and you're struggling, don't worry, you can do it. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but you can probably do it. I don't know. Anyway, that is actually going to be it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you enjoyed my little return to YouTube after a while. I hope most importantly, you guys have enjoyed looking at my new apartment and my bed. <laughs> my bed is so comfy, you guys. Life has been rough. This bed has gotten me through. I've figured out the right combination of mattress topper, the amount of pillows I need, the blankets that I need. The answer is a lot. I need a lot of pillows and a lot of blankets. Bed has been very good and I've welcomed you all into it just for this video. <laughs> then please leave. <laughs> but no, um, very recently things have actually been going pretty good. I got another new job that I can't talk about but I'm very excited about and I have the the pink apartment of my dreams and uh, School's been going good. I've been very busy, but it's been good. Thank you everybody who's been bearing with me and uh, sticking with me during these times. I really appreciate it. And thank you for watching. And I will see you on the next video where I will be talking about something else. <laughs> Bye.